Yo. It's a lot warmer, a lot nicer looking in here, a lot more warm in here now. I'm, I hope you enjoy it. I know I am. I actually don't need this anymore because it's starting to heat up just a little bit. The, the rays of the sun are warming me. For once, I don't have my blackout curtains, by the way. I highly recommend if you haven't seen blackout curtains. They're absolutely amazing for when you need to sleep during the day after a long gamer session. But anyways, that's not what I am here to talk about. What I'm here to talk about is Israel and the Palestinian war. So I made a video a little bit before talking about, you know, Israel and Palestine's history, how Palestine was created as a racist state. Basically, if you want an explanation of where Palestine comes from, imagine like there's a country named Detroit and then some angry white guys make a, you know, outside of, they renamed Detroit Wakanda, right? And outside of Wakanda, some guy makes a state called Ku Klux Klania, and then the Ku Klux Klania state starts launching missiles into Wakanda and then claims it's not racist. And that's basically Palestine's origin. And the interesting thing is Palestine was placed there by friendly elements in Arabia, like, you know, basically as a global homo kabuki theater to, tr to basically sell arms, right? The whole thing exists as a means for Raytheon and a bunch of other large companies to make a lot of free monies, both off the U.S. and Israel. And the only losers there are the Palestinian people and the Israelis that get murdered randomly. Right? Everyone else is making out like a bandit in this kapuki global homo theater. But this is all really just a joke. It's all just, you know, entertainment. It's all just, you know, you have a system, the Iron Dome, that blows missiles out of the sky. You know, it shoots American missiles at American missiles that were intercepted from Ukraine that Hamas has, right? It's all just clownworld.jpg at this point, if you haven't figured that out yet. Like, we're literally living in Raytheon's, you know, versus Raytheon making a couple million dollars each time one of these two missiles connects. And, you know, yeah, it sucks for the burnt Palestinian children and the, you know, graped and decapitated Israeli women or whatever. Not good for them, but at the end of the day, do they, who matters more, Raytheon's profits or them? I think we all know the answer to that, and that's Raytheon and Blackguard and Blackrock and all these other, you know, institutions that are making loads of money off of this military conflict and why does this theater always seem to pop up every few years especially when some you know wf shill or global homo aligned person is elected somewhere in a position hmm i wonder anyways I'll, I'll let you put the pieces together on that one maybe you can figure out the people that are behind this and why it's happening and what's continuing to cause it i'll give you a hint you just have to look in the people in power but anyways enough about that Sip, sip, sip. But enough about that. Anyways, so the reality is this forever war is going to exist as long as it benefits the military-industrial complex. And, you know, it could spark World War III, ooh, ooh, by accident. It could end a nuclear holocaust all for Raytheon's profits. But at the end of the day, it's, you know, that's a price I'm willing to pay to make sure that, you know, these few military companies continue to extort the U.S. tax dollar for their hard-earned funds. Like, that's what really matters right now. And, you know, this, the ground invasion and all of this. Well, yes, it's just a, a front to give Israel territory, because when Israel was originally created, they couldn't give them everything they wanted as far as the territory-wise. So they basically signed an agreement. And I'm sure this happened behind closed doors with friendly area, elements in Arabia saying, okay, so we'll give them this space, you know, we'll make a resistance faction here, we're going to name it after the ancient enemies of the Jews, you know, the Philistines, which of the Philistines was Palestine, in case you didn't know. That's the last time any Palestine existed in recent memory. You know, so it's it's literally just biblical shenanigans. It's all just kabuki theater. And this conflict is just orchestrated by the powers that be. And I, for one, am loving it. I love watching it. And yeah, I, I am just sitting by honking along in Clown World because it doesn't impact me because I've not put myself in a stupid position. And I hope you out there, dear viewers, are not putting yourselves in stupid positions. You know, it's the same thing like when you're, maybe this is another video, but when you're trying to play a video game, you don't put yourself in a stupid position. Or in life, you don't put yourself in a stupid position. Right, because then you end up getting drafted by some military recruitment, you know, having a tranny as a sergeant, and then getting your head blown off because you had a tranny as a sergeant, right? That's the reality of the situation. And... You know, it might seem funny from a thousand-foot overview, and maybe, 
you know, life is, you know, a comedy to those who think and a tragedy to those who feel. Maybe that's true, but you definitely do not want to be one who is feeling any of the brunt of this, you know, future and what the new incoming horrors of the world are going to be. I fully expect, you know, this period of the turning, this, this quarter, the winter seasons of our universe to fully impact us and fully hit us hard. And the human suffering should be immense. And I might get swallowed up in it. I'm hopefully not going to, but who even knows how much death and destruction may take the land. Who knows? But at the end of the day, I hope you're in a position where you can at least mitigate the risk to yourself. Because risk mitigation, you know, taking risks is not manly. I don't know who said that or what those ideas are, but being stupid is not a manly virtue. Sure, you can be the, you know, the Homer Simpson. Sure, you can be whatever the family guy's name is, Peter Griffin or whatever, right? Sure, you can pretend to be those, be what the media wants you to be, be the stupid risk taker. But in reality, there's nothing manly about that. It's just stupid at the end of the day. All the shaming that these people are going to try and get you to do as society barrels towards the edge. All of the increased pressure that's going to be put on you to fix their problems. You know, it's not your problem. You didn't cause these issues. You don't need to contribute to the solution for these issues. Put your hands over your ears and ignore it. You've got video games to play. And I do too. And I hope you take that to heart. Peace, brothers. Peace.